So Apple announced CarPlay, a new technology you're going to see in cars coming out later this year. I'm Jake Fisher, I'm the Director of Auto Testing at Consumer Reports. And I'm Glenn Doreen, Electronics Editor. So first of all, what is CarPlay? Well, CarPlay is Apple's first attempt to actually have a UI in the car. They're taking over the screen of your car, and it's going to work with several Apple phones that use the Lightning connector, namely the Apple iPhone 5, the 5C, and the 5S. Now, you tell me, what cars is it going to work in? We're going to see it in a bunch of cars. Um, now, Volvo has announced it, Honda, Hyundai have also announced it, Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, you'll see it in Ferraris. Well, a few people will see it in Ferraris. Are we getting, do we have a testing this? budget for a Ferrari? I'm working on it. And many other car manufacturers will follow. Why should anybody care about this? Do we care about this? Are we excited about this? Well, actually, we are pretty excited about it. We test a lot of cars, and the user interfaces for infotainment in cars, it generally is not very good, because a lot of these car manufacturers, they know how to make engines and suspensions and, and drivetrains, but they aren't very good at making that infotainment system. And the cell phone makers, they do know that stuff. Well, we test a lot of cell phones, and I can tell you that Apple is definitely one of the best user interface companies. But it's an interesting uh, question as to whether or not they can port that to a car driving at 60 miles an hour. What about driver distraction? Is this going to make us more or less distracted than we already are behind the wheel? Well, we're really going to have to see the final imp implementation. But it has the potential of making us a little bit less distracted, and I'll tell you why. A lot of people now, to get the functionality they need, they're looking at traffic, whatever, they're using their smartphones while they drive. You shouldn't do this! But this has the potential of getting that functionality and having it on the big screen of your car, using voice controls, talking to Siri, and making that all work together. So what does this mean if you're an Android user? Well, it's a little hazy, actually. We presume that you'll still be able to use things like Bluetooth and you know, do hands-free calling and stuff, but you're not going to get a lot of the high-level functionality that uh, Apple iOS users are going to get through this uh, device. So in the end, you may end up having to pick your car's operating system the same way that you do for your smartphone's OS or your computer's OS. So since we're talking about the Apple iPhone in your car, on your car's screen, naturally the conversation's got to turn to apps. So what's available? Well, it's not going to be pure porting of everything that you got on your iPhone. Obviously, it's going to be certain things that are kind of like the iPhone analog of what you normally have in your car. So you'd have, perhaps you'd have iTunes, you'd have your contacts, your messaging, Apple Maps. So Apple really doesn't have the best mapping program. Am I really going to have to rely upon Apple Maps for my navigation? Well, Apple Maps really isn't the best. It's not Google Maps. But at least it will be upgradable. But I don't really expect you're going to be able to just port any map system you want. You're not going to put Waze on this, for instance. Yeah, so it's a, Apple's capping the development uh, platform here, right? Not anybody can make, make an app for this uh, system. So, what, no Angry Birds? And no Candy Crush. Uh, no Cut the Rope. No Minecraft. Uh, no Fruit Ninja. No Fruit Ninja? Yeah.